Hello, I'm European astronaut Luca Parmitano, currently on board the space station with the Italian mission Volare for the Italian Space Agency. I feel a lot of water on the back of my head, but I don't think it speaks from my back. I see it now, wiggling. Patch is open, Shane. About half an hour into the EVA, 45 minutes maybe, uh, Chris and I were, were ahead on our task, so uh, we were starting our, our third task, and uh, I felt some water on the back of my head, and I realized that uh, it was cold water, and then I felt it covering my ears. And uh, at that point, we called the terminate for the EVA. I started going back to the airlock, and uh, um, the water kept trickling until it completely covered my eyes and my nose. Um, it was really hard to see. I I couldn't hear anything. It was really hard to communicate. Uh, I just I went back using just uh, um, uh, just memory, basically going back to the airlock until until I found it. And then uh, went inside, and as soon as the uh, as the two compartments were equalized, uh, they doffed, uh, meaning they took off my helmet, uh, wiped my face from all the water, about uh, three po three pounds of water, I would say, and uh, and that was the end of it. The space station is an incredibly advanced orbital laboratory and the science that we do on the station cannot be replicated anywhere else. It can only be done on the station and at any moment on the station we have um, between 130 and 150 experiments running and now the crew interacts with about two-thirds of it so uh, we will be um, dealing with installing, uh, repairing or following about 100 experiments and on these um, probably a good 20% uh, or more are physiology experiments where we are the science, the, we are the objects of the science and we perform the experiments on ourselves. One of the experiments that I think is very interesting is uh, because it has immediate repercussions. is uh, done on on a, on a furnace uh, on on orbit, and it's in uh, this furnace. Uh, first of all, it's interesting because we get to heat up stuff in orbit, and that's really cool because we don't we don't usually get to do that. And what we do on this one, we actually study material science. We uh, study how new materials that are being developed perform in orbit. Uh, in uh, extreme conditions, so lack of, lack of gravity, uh, vacuum, and then heating them up and cooling them down really fast and see what happens to these materials. Another one is uh, about how we perceive objects uh, on the ground versus uh, in orbit. So uh, this experiment uh, has uh, the astronaut wear uh, special glasses uh, with screens 
and then we, we look at a series of images that are, um, that are reversible. Uh, just like some of those uh, games for uh, um, on, on magazines where uh, sometimes you see the, a face or a base according to whether you see the white or the black. Well, this one is a series of these images and we, just, and we try to understand how our perception of these colors is affected by the lack of gravity. Rhythm is a is a very interesting experiment. Um, uh, the idea is that because on the space station the, uh, the the alternance of night and day is not is not regular. It's not like on Earth where we have. Uh, basically 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of night. Uh, here in the station we, we have uh, uh, 16 cycles a day uh, of night and day. So obviously our sleep pattern is, cannot be affected by those, um, uh, by those patterns and, and we, we go into a, uh, an artificial uh, sleep pattern. So uh, this study has a sensor uh, permanently connected to me for 36 hours that measures my temperature and uh, the temperature is related to the activity of the body so uh, technically when we are working we have a higher temperature when we sleep we have a lower temperature and by uh, collecting this data uh, they are able to determine how my sleep patterns have been affected uh, by living in an environment that is completely alien to what the normal uh, human uh, normal human is uh, uh, is supposed to, uh, to, to, to be adapted to. We work out about two hours every day. So we have uh, three kinds of, um, of machines here on orbit that we can use. One is a sort of a bicycle. Uh, the only difference is that we don't have a seat and we don't have handles because in space you float so all you have to do is strap into your pedals and start pedaling. And that for me is actually the hardest exercise because it's a, it's a very hard, um, it's really hard on your muscles and, and on your heart. Uh, the second machine that we use is a treadmill. And it's uh, it's fantastic because what we do we have this um, the, this uh, vest that we wear with uh, bindings so that we can simulate gravity and and stay put when we when we run on this treadmill and we can we can vary the speed so that uh, to exercise our legs and our heart at different levels. And the third machine is called ARED, it's a resistive device. With that, uh, even though we are weightlessness, uh, in weightlessness here, we can simulate weights. And so we can lift weights, we can do uh, squats and uh, shoulder press and uh, uh, bench pressing. All, basically, most of the exercises that we do on the ground, we, can, we manage to do here on orbit so that we can keep our body healthy. And if this wasn't exciting enough, I think that uh, the part where we talk about exploration is even more exciting. Now, you may wonder what kind of exploration we do orbiting around, around the Earth. But as a matter of fact, uh, we as humans have a unique capability to pick up things, uh, just looking at them, that cannot be done with a satellite or any other, any other electronic or automatic means. So that part of exploration already is something. But thinking that what we're doing today is paving the way to future exploration is really what makes my, my heart beat faster when I think that, uh, that um, what we're discovering today in terms of technology, in, term, in terms of physiology, we really open up the road for future exploration. <laughs>